here we go. Load test your Drupal website before it's too late. Uh, so this is a quick preview of um, my presentation on Drupal Con Global uh, Performance Summit. Come along, 3 a.m. in the morning in uh, Australia. It will be fun. <laughs> so uh, quickly the agenda. When is it too late? Uh, what is performance testing? What is load testing? How to run a load test? And architecting for how loads very quickly and some links. So when is it too late? All right, 1st of July and you go to IT news and you get ATO system tax crashes. Uh, of course, happens every year because ATO never knows when the end of financial year or new financial year starts. Um, also, we have uh, Queensland homeschooling started. Uh, they said apparently it was um, like one, 300 concurrent users. Well, that's about right. Uh, Queensland schools are about 500,000 users. So they had 300,000 users. Uh, New South uh, and Service New South Wales system failover in the refund rush yes uh that also affected the physical servers and physical um offices so that was a bit uh a bugger for everyone who was in the office they couldn't do anything anymore so what is load um performance testing um performance testing has several different types of testing under the hood so first is load testing Load testing uh, verification of the performance after under the expected peak. So let's say um, peak load. So let's say 10,000 users response time should be uh, maximum four seconds. Otherwise, we need to scale up or we need to rethink the architecture. Um, the stress spike testing is a bit like uh, everyone go to this website, um, like the um, uh, in your own personal um, tax end of the year, um, end of financial year on your website. So how many users does it take to uh, take down your system? Um, it's a sort of uh, application level DDoS attack testing. Um, so next, endurance testing. So how long can your system perform well um, under the um, um, specific load? So say we have maximum load and how long will it last? Um, so expected, of course, outcome is to um, go for a whole day, for an hour, for two hours, and so on and so forth. Um, volume testing. Volume testing is about the uh, amount of data um, that your web application is processing, uploading huge numbers of uh, files, uh, processing big files, um, loading information from huge databases, returning huge data sets, and so on. So, recovery testing is about how does your system recover from um, a takedown? Does it need a full uh, rebuild? And or can it take just one restart of the whole thing and five minutes later you're up and running again? And scalability testing is if you have uh, auto scaling um, or not so automatic scaling, um, can you actually scale up and um, and support the amount of loading. So there is a lot of different types of performance testing under here. We'll just have a look at load testing and a bit of spike testing. So we'll set a bench um, benchmark on um, um, on your testing um, pass or fail. Um, um, status so say we want our system to go for at least 10,000 concurrent users for three and the response time should be three seconds 
Um, and all right, so before you start your load testing, check your, with your hosting provider. A lot of them do not allow do load testing in the production environment or at all um, because the, that's the infrastructure. They might have um, specific, uh, if, they, if suddenly you'll receive a lot of uh, your um, web application will receive a lot of uh, traffic, then their DDoS attack prevention measures will kick in and that will stop because mostly that traffic is coming from similar environment or there will be some sort of a marker saying this is a testing uh, traffic. Um, and also if you overload their load balancers, it might take down some other web applications who are hosting in your um, um, shared environment. So be very mindful and read um, instructions of your hosting provider first. If you're not in your own cloud infrastructure or your own server infrastructure. Um, yeah, but you can have a look and create a VM on DigitalOcean or AWS or whatever, um, which resembles close enough your infrastructure, like two virtual CPUs and four gigs of RAM and, and see how far that will take you. All right, so what do we need to run a load test? Step one, first of all, we need to know when it fails. Um, so set up monitoring. So what fails? What what does it mean? The CPU is out of like out of resources. You're out of CPU, memory, storage, database, bandwidth, uh, or Apache or Nginx configuration parameters, or PHP. How many threads you're running? So set up your monitoring um, either real time right there on the server or uh, New Relic, Datadog, anything else, any other tools that you have. Um, step two, pick a tool. So there are several tools for load testing. Um, protocol level tool and browser level tools. And um, there's plenty of uh, software as a service um, tools available. They're multi-cloud, they're multi-region, you can spin um, all those nodes in your own infrastructure or their infrastructure, it can integrate your monitoring tools or your CI tools and so on and so forth. So very flexible, but can be really, really expensive. Like in terms of for 5,000 users, you would pay about $4,000. So be mindful of um, picking a tool and yes, it can get very expensive. All right. so. Uh, load testing tools, the protocol level tool. Uh, basically, it's a curl request. So um, you're just loading one resource. So it doesn't load your AJAX request. It doesn't load any related resources like CSS, JavaScript, or images. Um, so in access log on Apache, for example, um, you can see those tools are using their own user agent, just Python request or Java request. And those tools are, there's plenty of open source and uh, software as a service request, uh, tools. So uh, open source are JMeter, Locos, Gatlin, and so on and so forth. Browser level tools are a bit different. They load the whole, um, the whole web application page if you, um, that that you provide to it, that you ask. So that's good for a single um, um, page applications and AJAX requests, and you can test um, the whole more realistically uh, if you use a lot of uh, client-side technologies, how your website and your server will perform. Uh, but because of that, the concurrency is very limited. And also it's quite um, much smaller uh, choices in, in terms of tooling you can get. You can get the Selenium, of course. Um, and uh, serv uh, as a service, you can get Element for Flood.io. It's quite nice as well. So step three, <clears throat> creating test script. 
So depending on the, which tool you um, select for your load testing, um, they, um, they have their own languages that you can write the test tools in JavaScript, TypeScript, or Python, or Scala, and so on. They're usually very simple. Uh, just go visit homepage, visit search page, uh, some view page. They can get really complicated if you need them to log in as a user, submit the form, and usually just hit run. So like number of users you want to emulate the test and hit run. And then monitor the test execution. So for example, here we have number of users. It starts at 50, ramping up ramping up by 10 or 50 users up to 1,000 users in a couple of minutes. Uh, you can trace the response time as well in real life. So for example, we can see here response time goes beyond five seconds when we have about, um, how many users is that? That's about 700 users over here. Yep. And um, then you can see uh, the errors are showing up in the, um, as your um, tests run on extended period of time. So here we are out of connections and the, there are some connection times out. And monitoring your servers, your infrastructure. Oh, CPU hit 100%, not good. And Apache is taking over the memory of the whole box. Um, this is a very simple box. It's not optimized for anything, but it's just a test. Uh, Apache workers also hit the maximum of 150, and that's why that's the throttle. So this is where um, little bot bottlenecks on this particular server are. And check the logs. So we have a database crash here. You can see the um, about 6,000 requests um, have to didn't find the database. And then we had uh, error 500 for those requests. And then we have uh, successes. So we need to know what exactly failed uh, to identify that as a um, point of failure and improve them. So here are some tools that I used. Uh, Locust is open source Python tool, quite easy. It just tell it how many um, requests, how many users you want to emulate and what's the ramp up time and how many users will ramp up. So per second, you'll say I want 100 users per second. So it will try its best to um, uh, create those users. If you want to, you, you, you can um, create your little VMs, put Locust on it and start hitting your server even more to actually have a lot of hits. BlazeMeter is a software as a, a service. Uh, it's really nice. It has a lot of reports, but it's very expensive. For 5,000 users, uh, virtual users, you will have to pay about $4,000. So, um, um, but sort of 5,000 users doesn't sound that much if you're preparing for a event where you'll have millions of users. So um, I wonder how much will 500,000 users cost? Um, so you get the same um, details. Um, <clears throat> how many users, how many hits, how many seconds response time and bandwidth and so on. Um, and Flat.io, uh, so Flat.io, I used also 50 users and I used their tool, um, the element that actually renders the whole page. So it renders everything, um, uh, does like a browser request. Um, so all the resources, uh, all the JavaScript, all the images and CSS.
Um, the interesting thing about Flood.io, you can provide them your own infrastructure keys and they will uh, run the tests on your infrastructure. So um, you can pretty much have unlimited number of users. Um, yep. <clears throat> so, and after that, there are a couple of things that you can do to um, um, speed up and um, increase performance of your uh, web application. Besides all the standard TDNs and caching and so on, um, so offload CPU intensive tasks to the queue system um, so that it's not on the same request thread as um, as the user is requesting. Um, check your third party integration API request limit. Uh, as with New South Wales service, uh, they had a request limit on Salesforce connections, and that's what took them down. And that also affected their physical service in the offices where there wasn't so many people. Um, you can also enable CDNs always online or under attack, so that will throttle uh, users or give them um, uh, always online will basically cache everything on your website. So if you are a read-only website, like a news website, that can be really helpful. Um, under attack, that will um, give users, uh, first thing is a capture, so that they'll actually have to solve capture before they go onto your website. Um, if you're expecting a big event, then you can pre-upscale your um, whole infrastructure. So you can say, well, I know something's going to happen tomorrow. Lots of users are coming in. Let's uh, scale to 100 to 1,000 um, containers. Um, they, it, it will be cheaper to do that than to get into news. Um, and also monitor, monitor, and create alerts if suddenly you see a spike so that you can um, manage um, uh, the incoming traffic. Uh, another one, um, um, it's implementing queuing system. Um, like you have uh, Ticket Tech or Ticket Master saying, oh, yeah, you're in a virtual queue um, so that they don't crash with all those people who want to go to all those concerts. And uh, if you're prepared and if you've tested your website, you'll get the good news, like uh, recent headlines, um, GovCMS, which is a Drupal um, distribution of uh, government websites, had no downtime in recent COVID events where everyone was looking for the answers, what to do. So there you go. Thank you. Any questions? So when you have a thousand users that you're testing against, how do you do that? How do you set that up for your site? Are you just doing like a mass create? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, for um, if you want to have thousand authenticated users, you'll have to have thousand authenticated users. So the sets of all the um, testing tools allow you to load those. Of course, you'll have to have a, a wide list of uh, either um, a list of um, URLs, one-time sign-on URLs for this particular user. Or you'll, you'll have to have a thousand pre created users. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have to have a thousand pre created users. So you'll have to define them. You can do them in a CSV file or in a JSON file or something like that. Okay, so you could use Drush to create users. You know, like you can write a script to create random users if you wanted. Is that the kind of approach? Um, so, in so it's a Drupal list of users. You can create them manually. Okay, cool. All right. 
anyway, uh, have fun testing your website, download the Locust um, tool and see um, how far can your website go. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>